first, uh, I'm glad to be here to share the uh, SuperMap GIS 10 IBCC technology with all of you guys. Yeah. Uh, and uh, first, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jason Yuan, and uh, I uh, am the technical manager of uh, SuperMap uh, International Department. And uh, our topic today is the our topic today is the introduction of SuperMap GIS 10i uh, BitCC technology. But before that, please allow me to introduce the company profile to you. Uh, SuperMap was founded in 1997 under the support of Academy, uh, China Academy of Science. And the founder of SuperMap is Dr. Zhong Arshun. And uh, uh, as I know, SuperMap is the platform provider all over the world. And we already got listed in stock exchange market in 2009. Uh, and uh, SuperMap followed a lot of the industrial uh, standards. And uh, here we'll only list some of the uh, important certifications, such as the CMF IDEV and uh, the OTC standards. I think we know GIS, so all of us knows about OTC, right? And uh, also, we know, uh, also we follow the uh, ISO uh, quality certification. And uh, uh, this is the annual revenue from 2015 to 2018. And we can see the revenue of SuperMap grew steady. And the revenue of, 2000 of eight, 2018 is almost two or three times of 2015. And we invest 18% revenue to the R&D. And uh, SuperMap has more than 4,000 employees all over the world, not only in China, but also we have uh, employees in Indonesia, in Malaysia, Korea, and Turkey. And uh, this is part of our international team. Uh, and uh, this is the guys who attend the annual meeting of 2019. And we have built uh, ecosystem, a, a partner ecosystem to help both of SuperMap and our partners to uh, grow together. And we already built a lot of win-win solution. And now we, uh, we already have more than 700 partners all over the world, uh, such as the Huawei, such as IBM, Microsoft. So now let's start uh, uh, let's start our uh, topic today. Uh, this, this is the five features of SuperMap technologies. We call it BitCC. Sorry, we call it BitCC. Uh, the B is B, uh, the, the B is Big Data, I is AIGS, and T is 3DGS. And CC are the basics of uh, SuperMap GIS system. They are cloud native GIS and uh, cross-platform GIS. So first, let's take a look at the cross-platform GIS. Uh, the cross-platform means uh, the SuperMap, SuperMap products can not only run on Windows, but also they can run on Linux and uh, Unix natively. So that brings us a lot of value. Uh, the core library of SuperMap is uh, Develop, developed by C++. And based on this core library, we made uh, the different coding language interface of it, such as Java, su such as uh, C Sharp. And the cross-platform bring us the value of, the first one is safe and controllable. As we know, we even cannot forbid the automatic upgrade auto, uh, of Windows. Uh, in our own PC or laptop, right? So, and Linux is more controllable and we can configure it almost all of, all of them. And the second one is the uh, lattice technology. Uh, we, know, uh, uh, we know that uh, the new IT technology are always based on the Linux, such as uh, suggest AI, suggest big data, they are all come from Linux. And if the JS platform can support Linux natively, that means we can always catch the 
newest, the latest technology of AI and integrate them with JS. And the last one is cost effective. And I think it's easy to understand the Linux system is free, right? Okay, and the, uh, our second topic, uh, I'm sorry, let me adjust my screen. Okay, our uh, our second uh, our second um, feature is is the cloud native JS, uh, and we can see this is the development history of uh, SuperMap technology, and we revise the first products of cloud natives to 2018. But before that, we already have the cloud-enabled JS and cloud-ready JS. First, we can take a look at the full carriage of SuperMap Cloud, cloud-native JS. Or we can see the, this, these are the four important products who, which build the whole cloud-native JS. They are the uh, JS portal, which is the SuperMap I portal, JS application server, which is SuperMap I server. I server can help us to publish our data as a service, and we can share the service, we can share the JS capability with others. And the JS H server, which is uh, SuperMap I H, and the JS Cloud Manager, which is the SuperMap I Manager. And we can take a look at this diagram. This is showing how these four carriage or how these four products work together. First, we use iServer to publish our spatial data to share the uh, share our data and information with others. And we use the iPortal to manage all of this data. And to uh, uh, iPortal is the, as a unified portal access portal to the whole cloud JS system. And, and then on the cluster side, we use the iManager to manage all of them. But the IH is used for, uh, such as if the network is not good. Uh, for example, our cloud center is in, the, uh, is in the capital of our country, but, the, but our user is around all of our country. So, uh, in some area, the user's network is not good, so we can deploy one IH as a H computer to uh, H computation uh, on the user side to help us enhance the performance of network and analysis. And here is one of the uh, user cases. Here's one of the user cases. Like uh, we already uh, we already did it for uh, we already uh, did this case in one of the uh, government agency of China. Uh, and at first, what they want is only one application. We can see the app one, and uh, they use the super I server to manage all of their data and to uh, publish the service and uh, make and build the application. And on the client side, they, they use the web browser to show the application. And at the same time, also there are the I desktop and I objects as the terminals. But during the development of their business requirements, they found that only one application is not is not enough uh, to meet their uh, daily work, daily uh, requirements. So they need more and more application. Like we can see the application two, three, uh, two, three, four, five, six. So in this time, the, there will be a lot of JS service. 
then we need to use the public service platform or we can say Supermap iPortal to help them organize all of the GIS service. And, and then the user expands all over the country. And sometimes some area, the users cannot access the cloud, the cloud center uh, smoothly. So they also need to establish the province node. And, uh, uh, and the whole GIS system uh, combined into a GIS, is a cloud GIS. And also, and at the last, they add the iMobile as a new terminal. And on the right side, we can see the service aggregation. So that means they use the app manager to manage all of this whole system, like uh, the operation and maintenance. And, but at last, what is the cloud native? Uh, the cloud native mainly has three features. Uh, they are the microservice, the Docker, and automatic ar arrangement. Let's take a look at it. The first one, the first feature of cloud native is JS microservice. Um, in the traditional JS system, the minimum unit is single JS server. The minimum unit is the server and such as one i server is the, is the minimum uh, unit. Uh, but sometimes if one of one or two of the services has crashed, so it will affect the whole server system. It's, it's not good enough, it's not flexible. So the, in the JS microservice, uh, we split the whole server into a lot of independent service services and we can deploy this service into different uh, computers or different server and just come and suggest for the server one it only contain the needed service uh, it, it doesn't need to contain all of the service and this and this whole architecture is more flexible and more uh, easy to do the operation and maintenance and the second feature is Docker. The, uh, uh, to deploy the service, we use Docker technology as a container to contain all of this service. And uh, Supermap already support the Docker technology in all the GIS uh, products. And we can access the Docker link to download the Supermap Docker image. And the last one is uh, the last one is GIS Center uh, dynamic arra arrangement and uh, uh, elastic scaling. And uh, here we can see first is the uh, the basic is the Supermap GIS 10i, and uh, we based on 10i to split all the service and refine the service and use Docker as a container to contain all of this service. And then we use the uh, Q uh, Kubernetes technology to manage all this Docker and to do the JS arrangement so we can achieve the management scout, uh, scheduling. And this is the interface of uh, uh, a manager for K8S. The K8S actually is the uh, uh, Kubernetes. And at last, uh, Supermap I manager is the whole operation platform for us to help us to manage all of our uh, GIS system. And it, it can help us to achieve the one-click deployment cloud native GIS environment. So that's about the cloud native GIS. And the third one, which is the most important one is new 3D GIS. Here I will, I will use three content, I will from three direction to introduce you the new generation of 3D JS. The first one is integration of 2D and 3D. Uh, talking about 2D and 3D, um, I think the 3D JS, we already discussed it for uh, a long time, several years, but a lot of 3D JS platform is made by this. They use the 2D JS platform. 
plus the 3D visualization software, and they call it a 2D and 3D integration, but it's not. It's only 2D and 3D linkage. It has some poor features like the poor data integration, the difficulties in functional integration, and lack of adva uh, advanced and analysis ability. So this is only a matter of impendency. Expendency, yeah. So in the real integration between 2D and 3D, here, uh, this is the diagram. The first one is a 2D and 3D integrated spatial data management. That means we need to manage, we need to store all, the, all of our 2D and 3D data into one database. And Supermap can help you to do that. Supermap can store all the 3D models, uh, such as the model we built by uh, 3D Max, we built by Beam software, or, or even the oblique photogrammetry, even the point cloud, we can store them, we can store them into, uh, into spatial database, and which is the same as 2D data. And the second one is the same construction of 2D and 3D integration. That means uh, it, we can not only store both of 2D data and 3D data into one spatial data, but, but also we can build the 2D data into 3D. We can convert the 2D into 3D in an easy way. Such as uh, first we need to create the model of one tree. This is only one tree. And then in the scene, we can pick some points and configure the, point, the, the 2D points as 3D trees automatically. And it's used like this. And also it can be used pipeline, such as this is a model of Wolf. And we only use some points to uh, specific the uh, to specify the location of valves and then config the different types of valve it can choose like this and also we can uh, render the 2d pipeline as the pipeline model and uh, in the last it will choose like this uh, and also for others we can see this picture on the left side is the 2d vector data but on the right side is a 3D scene which converts from this 2D vector data. And uh, this just suggests the 2D polygon, we just extend them and make them as a 3D model and then paste the texture on the surface of it and it will choose like this. <coughs> and the third one is the spatial analysis of 2D and 3D integration. The spatial analysis is one of the most important GIS capability of GIS. And so we not only need to achieve the spatial analysis on 2D, but also we need to achieve the spatial analysis on 3D, such as the measurement, such as the 3D network analysis. Uh, we know uh, the underground pipeline has the different level, right? then we need to create the network data set based on to show the pipeline and we need to based on this pipeline network data set to achieve the network ana analysis and and then the show to the analysis in 3d and also some real 3d analysis we, and it is based on gpu such as the view sheet analysis the profile analysis skyline analysis shadow analysis and the terrain analysis. And the second feature of 3DGIS is support multi-source data. Uh, there are some new types of 3DGIS data comes this year and they are very easy to use, uh, such as the oblique photogrammetry. And this data is captured by the camera on the drone. We use drone or UAV to fly around the world and there will be uh, three or five, three or five or uh, seven cameras on the UAV, and they have different angle. And when the when the fly when we fly around the area, it will uh, for one object it will take 
uh, multiple pictures from different angle and then to create the model automatically. It, uh, the oblique photogrammetry has the features of high efficiency, high accuracy, high uh, realism, uh, realism, realism, and uh, the low cost. It's very, very easy to get it. It's, the, it's cheap and won't take a long time. But there are still three challenges faced by automat uh, automated modeling achievement of oblique photogrammetry, such as the, uh, because we need to take, fig uh, take one object for multiple pictures, so the data volume is always big, the massive data. And, and then um, it's similar as the 2D image data, all of the objects are continuous with each other, such as the building and the road, they are continuous. It's, this is a surface, a continuous surface. So it's hard for the GIS management software to extract the independent object, such as I want to click this building and to, to get the attributes of it. So this is another challenge. And another one is the effect repair. Another one is the effect repair. Uh, sometimes, uh, such as for the water surface, it's hard to get the fine effect of water. So we need to repair the effect. And Supermap, how Supermap faces these three challenges. First is we can load the OSGB directly. The OSGB uh, is the role format of oblique photogrammetry and if we can load them directly that means we don't need to store them again and uh, the performance will be good and next one is the uh, how to extract the independent object we can use the overlay with vector polygon to extract the object and for the uh, effect repair, we use the symbolic modeling. Uh, we, just con we just choose which area is the water and to uh, config it uh, as the water symbolic, water symbol, such as this is ob object query in uh, oblique photogrammetry. And we overlay the vector data and 3D model, and we then we can, based on the uh, vector data to get the attributes. Uh, and also, uh, th this is for querying the attributes and uh, even we can extract the different floor and units inside of a building. And, uh, and then we can create the thematic map, we can do the spatial query. So, and, and the next one, a uh, new coming model is uh, B, is BIM building information modeling. And the beam can bring JS to indoor and JS can give the independent beam building a geospatial geospatial. Yeah, and the important data source beam is one of the important data source of 3D JS and it can bring JS from outdoor to indoor. So these are some cases of uh, of BIM uh, application, like road and bridge construction, uh, city design, and uh, this is the monitoring of uh, construction, and uh, this is the uh, building operation and maintenance. All right, and besides of BIM, uh, Supermap can help BIM model to make as a uh, or CIM, which is City Information Modeling. Okay, the last feature of new generation of 3D is support multi-terminals. And the change of terminals is of 3D GIS is from PC to web to mobile. And on the website, we use Supermap Icon 3D for WebGL to rendering all the models. And this is one of the uh, cases we, we did and all the functions like 3D analysis, like the skyline, like wheel shape analysis can be done on web.
and 3D WebGL can support almost all of the 3D data, such as oblique photogrammetry, like beam data, point cloud, 3D field data, turbine data, and others. And it can support all the functions. Uh, the, another one is mobile. And Supermap, Supermap can render 3D model on mobile. And, and also the VR, this is using VR to control the road surface and to query the attributes of underground valves. And also AR. AR is based on the camera of mobile. We can render the BIM building, BIM model on the desk, and we can easily see the inside of the building like this. Okay, and the true 3D, the new generation of 3D can help us to build the digital twin city. And the next one is Big Data GIS. For Big Data GIS, we mainly has two directions. The first one is spatial big data. It's for, this is for spatial big data. And the second one is we can use the big data technology to reconstruction, to reconstruct of the classic spatial data. This is distributed re reconstruction of classic spatial data. And uh, these are some of the uh, distributed spatial data engine can be supported by Supermap, such as the HBase, such as Elastic Search, such as PostgreSQL, and also DFS, DSS. Such as this is the query, this is a querying of a billion level of data, and it can return the result in one second. And the big data analysis is based on the distributed technology. We can achieve the uh, distributed analysis, such as the hotspot analysis, OD, and the streaming data is to get the real-time data from IoT. And the classic just distributed reconstruction, like the overlay analysis and buffer analysis, region statistics, and also the distributed spatial machine learning. And I will show you later. Suggest so this is one of the case of distributed analysis. And we uh, 20.6 million records, uh, and the whole data volume is uh, 68 GB. And we can base it to do the overlay analysis. And if we use the traditional computing, like in one computer, it will take us more than 50 minutes. And but if we deploy the whole analysis into four nodes, then it will only take us two minutes to finish all the process. Uh, like there are 20 times in hands. Uh, also the streaming data service is we can get the data, the real-time data, real-time big data from the IoT layer, such as uh, GPS, uh, such as uh, mobile signal, and to get it, and based on the data, we can do the spatial feed filter or the attribute filter, and then we can output it to map or store them into data store. Like this is one of the two things based on the data in, in China. And uh, this is another one to show the virtualization distributed storage. And this is to showing the no tiling dynamic rendering based on edge base. And we can, the, we can see the data volume is very big, but we can show it smoothly. Also, there are some other visualization of geographic data and some dynamic visualization. So that means, um, except of the big data storage and and the real time data, we can we can 
shown the data on uh, the different terminals in a very cool effect. Like the dynamic expression of density analysis, this is using heat map. And also the uh, trajectory of taxis. And the three question of grid aggregation. Okay, so the big data JS is a new engine for smart city. And the last one is the newest one, is the latest one, the AI JS. Uh, we raised the Supermap AI tech AI JS technology from 2019, last year. And uh, this is a diagram of it. It's kind of complex. We don't need to talk about this one by one. We only need to know, based on the basic support, there are three types of AIGS functions. Like we, we call it Geo AI, AI for GIS, and GIS for AI. So for Geo AI, it's the integration between AI and GIS. We can achieve some functions uh, and get the capability for, from both of AI and GIS. The AI, the AI for GIS is AI can help GIS software to improve its own capability. And the GIS for AI is the AI analysis results can be shown or can be rendered on GIS platform. So first, let's take, let's take a look at the Geo AI. Uh, this is one of the example. Uh, this is the estimation of housing prices infected by infrastructure. Like we get a lot of factors, such as the school, such as the uh, hospital, such as the, also the construction, uh, the transportation. We consider all of these factors and to assume the price of, the, of housing in Beijing, and this is the result we get. Also, we can base on the palm tree. Uh, we base on the image data to detect the object of it. Such as this is the palm tree detection. As we know in some of the countries, palm tree is one of important assets for the country or for the company. And they need to know how many palm trees they have. But it's hard to count by one. So we can base on AI to detect all of these trees. And even we can detect the trees which not grow well. And this is the, geo AI, the flow of Geo AI. First, we need, uh, uh, we all, even uh, almost all the uh, Geo AI uh, technology are based on this flow. First, we need to prepare the data, and then we need to use the software to convert the data as samples and then make based on samples to build the model then we can get some get the models and the last one is to use the model to get the result what, of what we want and this whole flow need the multiple iteration uh, and supermap can provide the all the tools you may need in the whole process, in the in the whole flow, uh, like first, like this one is the uh, data training, and this one is the model training, and this one is for how to use the data. Yeah, the sample generation, the model training, and object the object detection, and on the other side, we can not only achieve them by uh, the desktop, we can also publish the model as service. We call it data science service. We can publish, we can publish as service then, uh, like this. First, we, we can use Supermap. We need to use Supermap at desktop to train the model. And then we can publish the model to a server as the data science service. And then the, all the users can import their data to a server and get the result of uh, uh, reasoning or prediction, predicting. <clears throat> okay, this is one of the uh, samples of Supermap machine learning service. 
All right, and then we go to the AI for GIS. Uh, it is AI helps GIS to enhance its capability, such as based on AI to detect the types of like car of uh, this is the main hole uh, of pipeline network and then we can put them yeah and we can record the location of them and this one is we can use the uh, ai technology and based on the ar uh, based on the camera to do the survey very easily such as we just used our camera to uh, open the camera to walk around it and then we can get the results of this area And, and the last one is GIS for AI. This is the AI analysis results are placed in GIS for results management, spatial visualization and analysis. So just this one is to show the AI results of, uh, of transportation analysis. And this is based on the, uh, sorry, this is based on the AI technology like first we can use AI to detect all the cars, vehicles on the road. And then we can base, uh, and can based on the object and the overlay analysis with which cap with the cap with this capability is provided by GIS and detect which car is running on the wrong way. So let's take a summary. The AI GIS mainly has three parts the Geo AI, AI for GIS, and GIS for AI. For Geo AI, it, it has some functions of spatial machine learning, spatial deep learning. And AI for GIS, it, there are some functions of AI attribute collection, AI measurement, AI map match, and AI interaction. And GIS for AI, it, there are some functions like spatial visualization for AI and spatial analysis for AI. Okay, so AI GIS can empower the geo intelligence so let's take a summary supermap gis bit cc technology is the main features which make supermap different with other gis platform provider it is bitcc they are big data gis the ai gis new 3d gis and cloud native gis and uh, course platform gis okay and uh, uh, the last one is the uh, SuperMap GIS 10i product system. Uh, here, this is all of the uh, SuperMap products. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your listening. And if you have any question, please feel free to contact me from this email.